The wing on the fun cub that I acquired recently did not have the flaps connected. I'd really like to use the flaps. What I need is a suitable control horn to fit into the flap itself here. Having acquired the, the model assembled, they were not obviously with it. The other thing that I needed to do is to separate the flap from the main wing itself, just simply cutting with my little razor saw along the edge there and then sanding that to make sure it was flat. I thought I'd show you today my design process as such and 3D print a little control horn to uh, help us out here. I do have a copy of the instructions but they're pretty vague when it comes to the flap arrangement. You can see the control horn that I need there appears to be angled at about 45 degrees and it shows the servo installation with the neutral position at some 70 degrees. Uh, that will be forward and unusually the arm will be facing uh, outboard. What are we going to need then? Just some basic measurements to understand the shape of the thing that we need. A pair of El Cheapo calipers will suit. The slot then will be 20 millimeters long, possibly not surprisingly, 10 millimeters wide. There is a slot there and a recess. We need to know the depth of the recess. It looks to be about 2.5 there. The center part then going down to a depth of five. I can keep all those measurements in my head. Length of the control horn itself appears to be around about 25 millimeters. With those numbers in mind then, let's take a look at roughing something up in uh, Tinkercad. This rather phallic looking object then is what I've knocked up in Tinkercad. If you've not used Tinkercad it's free to use. This is by no means a Tinkercad tutorial. Essentially though it's a bit like Lego. You have these pre-defined shapes that you simply drag on to the work surface and then edit to your heart's content. Essentially then these parts here are just rectangles that I've drawn and dimensioned. If I click on them there you can see the dimensions, the 10 wide there and 20 deep. The height here between the top platform and the bottom of the T. And then this <laughs> device here, 25 high, and that was a rectangle that was vertical and I've just angled over using the protractor there. I added the round roof part to the top here before finally putting in the hole here as well as the solid objects you have these which are not solid. <laughs> <coughs> so you take a, take a cylinder, I've made it one millimeter diameter and pushed it through the solid to make the hole there for the control horn. Once I was happy with that, we go up to the export function and for 3D printing we want to export it, in my case, as a .stl, a stereo lithography file. But we're not out of the woods. Once we've got our STL file, we then need to convert that to what's known as G-code, which drives the 3D printer. My slicer of choice for today, at least, is this slicer and I'll provide links in the description to where you can download these. This is another free program. All that I did was to add the STL file to the printer bed, if you like, and then multiply it. However, it's not going to print very well as things are because we have these overhangs that will make a, a terrible mess. What we need to do is to provide support material under here such that we can print on top of it the top part of the plate. In this particular software that's done in the print settings, here we can see a tab for the support material, tell it to generate it. You can play around with various parameters here. It's a good idea to select it as detachable. You want to be able to get rid of it easily afterwards. Again, this is not a 3D printing tutorial. The other settings that I've already set uh, for the filament that I'm using, 
which is the PLA type of plastic. And we've got the diameter and various other bits and pieces in here. I set my extruder to 210 degrees and I have a heated bed heated to 45 degrees. Once you're happy with all those settings, then we go to the tab here to export the G-code, which I've already done, then load it onto the printer and pray. Here we can see the first part of the print process where it's laying down the support material. You can see the tab line in the middle and the support material either side. In this video the printer has moved on. You can see the entire support material there with the remainder of the tab on top and it's just printing out the control arms. Hot off the printer then are the results of our labour, some little bits of stringing that need to be removed. Here you can see the support material that we saw being laid down at the beginning of the print. Let's see if that's going to be a pain to remove or not. That's breaking away as designed. Not very much more cleaning up to do there, just a couple of little whiskers. It's not going to be a problem as it's going to be sitting down in the foam anyway. There, that should pass muster I think. How did we do dimensionally? As our 20 and our 10, 5.1, there's our little one mil hole. What I'll be fitting on there is one of these clevises, just about right there. We need to open the hole out to enable that to pass through. There, that can comfortably move through there now. Let's see how she fits on the wing. Just test fitting that in the hole there and it fits, even if I may say so myself, rather perfectly. I'll probably use some epoxy to hold that in. With our servo then in the neutral position, no flap. If I now increase that, just keep it in place. At full travel, the control horn is, is vertical. And if I move the camera around, you can see there that that is a, a silly amount of travel. I shouldn't think I'd ever deploy flaps to that degree, but we never know. Now I can get those epoxied in place and set up my transmitter. Thanks for watching.